But I want to talk about uh, the bike uh, this Saturday. Right. Uh, what's in store? Tell me what, what you guys can do this year. Um, you know, we're going to keep the same equipment that we've done in the past, but uh, we have more kids. We have more, more participants. We're trying to get, um, we have like, you know, 3,500, you know, participants in it this year. Um, it's held in Akron, Ohio, which is my birthplace. Um, it's a great event. I'm looking forward to it. I'm looking forward to seeing all the kids get excited about riding, um, riding the bike, but at the same time, just having a good time. How many bikes are you giving away this year? Um, it all depends who I show up. I mean, if you show up, you might be able to get one. <laughs> you know, but we're going to give away, um, you know, a, quite a bit of amount. It's, it's, you know, we don't. You know, all the kids that show up, they can get yeah, get a bike. Right? Every kid that show up. Why did you start the bike a Um, well, it came from you know me and my friends. You know what I do in the summertime? We ride bikes to stay in shape. Um, you know, me and four or five of my friends, we, you know, they come to the house and we meet up at like eight o'clock in the morning and we ride bikes just cross country. You know, we start on the road and we just just ride and we was like, um, this could this could be a, a pretty good event if we could get. You know, um, you know, a few celebrities that come in town, and you know, we get the mayor behind us, and you know, we get kids. Um, you know, we just, you know, it just started just like that. We turned it into an event, and it's been great. It's it's, it's really important to you. It's, it's your major charity as far as your foundation is concerned. Absolutely, it's very important. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about sports for a second. Uh, last night, the Boston Celtics they won the championship. Was was that surprising to you? Uh, did you think the Celtics were going to? I thought they had a, um, you know, they had the right pieces. Um, you know, they had everything that you need in winning the championship. Um, defensively, it starts there. And, and when you trickle down to the players that they had in Ray Allen and Paul Pierce and Kevin Garnett, uh, what more can you want? Yeah. You know, and they, they took care of business. When you, when you consider the fact that you guys took them seven games and almost won the thing, and the Lakers got blown out in game six, what does that tell you about the team you have right now? Well, we're a very good team. One thing about us, uh, we don't back down from nobody. Um, we're very tough. We're very physical, and we match their physicality. If you don't match Boston's physicality, you're not going to win. Um, and just look, looking at the, the the Lakers in the finals, and the, you know the, the physicality level wasn't matched. Um, you know, and that's why you know Boston won that series. What do you think we need to do? The Cavaliers need to do to get to that next level. No, we got to continue to get better. Um, it starts with every individual. You know, um, saying to themselves, "I need to get better as an individual to help our team." Um, you know, and if that, you know, if guys can do that and sacrifice, you know, you know, their summer to working out and getting better for the team, then we automatically going to get better. Do we I, need any more pieces? Do you think? Well, yeah, I think so. I think um, we're one or two pieces away from, you know, playing into June almost every year. Everybody's worried about what LeBron is going to do. Is LeBron going to leave at the end of his contract? What will it take for you to stay here in Northeast Ohio? Um, we gotta continue to win. Um, you know, you know, we continue to win, we continue to get better. Um, I have nothing to worry about. I'm I'm very happy to be a part of this franchise. I'm very happy to be a part of this community. I grew up thirty minutes away from Cleveland, so you know, it's home for me. You know. What does it mean playing home, man, being in front of you know, a, a town that absolutely adores you? I mean, you can go other places, you probably wouldn't get this kind of love. What does that mean to you? Uh, that means a lot. You know, I've grown up you know, playing in front of these people that come and watch me every night on the NBA level. Um, to get an opportunity to have all my friends and family at every single home game, uh, it means a lot because they've seen me grow for the guy that played in a, in a gym that only set 30 people now to 20,000. So, you know, it means a lot. When you were growing up in Akron, and I mean, I know you dreamed of being in the NBA. Did you ever dream it would get to this point? It would get to this point? Oh, well, I never put a... I never put a cap on on my on my basketball expectancy. Um, I knew I could be really really good. I continued to work. I continued to love the game. Um, one thing about me, I respect the game of basketball. I respect the guys who laid down the stones um, to get me to this point. So I respect the game a lot. So um, you know, for me to say, um, did I know it was going to be like this? I'm not sure, but I never put a lid on top of my you know on top of what I wanted to become. What, what's it like being LeBron James? I mean, just having, you know, all the money you need, the access. I mean, to the average person, they probably don't imagine what it is to be you. Well, it's, it's definitely fun um, to be in a position that I am in. and um, I give thanks to, you know, you know that man above for giving me these God-given abilities. Uh, but it's not easy. You know, um, you know people see the, the, the glamour and, you know, they see what I do. Um, 
you know, but they don't see the hard work that I put in. Um, they don't see the, you know, what people call pressure that, you know, I don't believe in it, but people call it pressure that, that you have to live up to or, you know, they don't see me going home to two kids that's running around the house, you know, you know all they see is me putting the, you know, the basketball in, inside the hoop. So, um, you know, it's not all fun, you know, but, you know, I, I'm enjoying my life. How is it being a dad now for the second time? That's great. Um, it's wonderful. It's everything and more that I expected. Um, now I got both my kids running around the house now. You know, Bryce just turned one on the 14th of this month, so um, they both growing, you know, right between my eyes. Would you, would you want them to grow up and be basketball players, or do you have any uh, any dreams for yourself? Well, I haven't even told them to play basketball, but, you know, they're doing it already. Um, LeBron, he plays basketball every day, and Bryce isn't able to throw the basketball up to the rim yet, but he's picking up a basketball, so I guess that it's automatically in store to him. Now, you know, I'm crazy about your mom. She, she's like a celebrity here. There's no doubt about that. When she got upset when you got the did she surprise you? No, no, no. Did she? No, she didn't surprise me. But, uh, no, nah, just, you know, that's how my mother is. She's passionate about me. Um, and she's seen me grow from, you know, when I was born all the way to where I am now. So mm-hmm. my mother is a passionate woman. And she showcased that. What's the best thing about being a Um, Just that I'm able to go out and, and showcase my talent every night on the basketball court. Um, and at the same time, I'm able to go off the court and, and make families and kids excited and, and happy. I'm able to give back, um, especially to my community where I grew up, um, knowing that it's one of the you know, not-so-rich you know, communities in, in Ohio. So that's a, to be able to do that with out of my pocket and, you know, with the help of some of my foundation and the help of, you know, some of my, you know, my business, able to help families. Uh, that means a lot. What's the worst thing about being LeBron James? Uh, there is no worst thing about being LeBron James. Um, you know, I, like I said, I don't believe in pressure. So, um, you know, I don't, nothing that I do um, is worse or bad or I don't take anything for granted. I don't, I don't believe in anything is bad in my life right now. Talk about LRMR. What are you guys doing right now? Uh, well, we just, our latest, we just signed O.J. Mayo. Um, that's going to be one of the top five picks in this draft, projected. Um, I mean, we're continuing to grow. Uh, we're continuing to grow as a as a, as a business. Um, we continue to get our name out there, and um, we're doing a great job of um, of innovating what it means to, to be a company, um, especially in sports, and and hopefully be on that. Last time we talked, you said that you wanted to be a global icon. Is that still in your crystal ball? Um, yes, it is. Um, Getting close to it? Yeah, I'm very close. I'm very close. I think the Olympics is, is going to be uh, not just my coming out party, but uh, USA basketball. Well, thanks for the time. Appreciate it. Get a couple of two shots. But thank you. I appreciate you appreciate sitting it. down. No problem. Good, good Thanks. What, keep, what keeps you humble? How do you stay? Humble? Man, that's just how I was brought up, man. Um, I'm, I'm very outgoing. I'm, you know, I do things that normal people do. You know, and, you know, I'm not, you know, I can't, you know, have the same privacy a lot of people. But I go, I go to movies. I go to the mall. I go. Nah, I mean, they have at times, but you know, I walk right in without no notice. I walk right in Dairy Queen, give me, a, give me an ice cream cone. I go right. Now, I walk inside McDonald's and give me some French fries, just like everybody else. So, like, that's what keeps me grounded. I don't, you know, people ask, you know, why you don't stay in the house? 